Alright, let's take a look at a few examples of how we can use the views object to filter data from tables and how we can use them to join tables together using common values. In the first use case, we're going to take a look at two reports that are exactly identical. The difference, however, is that one report is built on top of the table and the other report is built on top of the view. If we look at both of these reports side by side, you will see that we're looking at data for the last 30 days from the order date. So even if you look at my dates here on the left hand side, you can see that they fall within 30 days. And my report that's built on top of the view is exactly the same. They're both filtering 1900 entries from that table and they're both filtering the data within the last 30 days from the order date. The main difference here, however, is that this report is filtering data on top of 40,000 entries from my table. However, my view is predefined. It's filtering only 1,900 entries from that table, and I built my report on top of the view that only contains 1,900 entries. First, let me go ahead and show you my table. So let's open this table, and you will see how the table contains 40,000 records. Next, let's take a look at the data page that's built on top of this table. Let's edit. And right away, you're going to be able to see that my data source is the table that contains 40,000 entries. We're going to hit Next. I'm going to filter my data based on the order date field. And on the subsequent screen, you will see that when I click on the Logic tab, I moved over the order date field, and I'm using previous X days, and I set that to 30 to only show me data points within 30 days from the order date. And then once you click on finish, this report is now going to show you all the data points within 30 days from the order date. It's perfectly acceptable to build your report this way. However, the only drawback to this is if you have, let's say, a million entries or two million entries in your table, you might experience a little bit of lag because the filter is trying to pull the data or query the data on 40,000 entries or one million entries or two million entries from your table. And because of that, you might experience some performance issues. But in this case, because I only have 40,000 entries in the table, you will see even when I refresh the browser, how quickly I was able to pull that data. Because again, we're only dealing with 40,000 entries. But if you do experience a little bit of lag, a much faster way to do this is to simply build your view that's going to filter the data that you want and then build your report on top of the view. So let me show you the view that I have. Let's go down to Views. I'm going to click on Edit. And what you do is you move the uh, table to the right that you want to filter the data on. You click Next. And inside the Criteria tab, you're going to see how I set this up exactly like I did in the data page. I have my order date. I'm using previous X days. And I set the value to 30. And just set your own time zone that you have inside this dropdown. And then when you click Finish, this view is now going to show you those 1,900 entries. And now that we see the data, we can go back to data pages. And let's edit the one that was built on top of the view. Click Next. You can see how my data source, I'm using the view as opposed to the table because the view already contains the data that I want to see. Click Next. Once again, we want to filter the data, but this time we don't need to filter on any one of our fields because the view is already filtering everything that we need to see. And then from there, you set up all of your fields the way you normally do. You click Next. You configure all of your other settings. And then when you click Finish, you should be able to see a view that's going to run much faster because we're now looking at the data on top of 1,900 entries that's already been predefined inside the view as opposed to looking at the data on top of 40,000 entries. Let's take a look at our next use case. In this example, we'll take a look at two different reports using a search interface. And on the search interface, you will see how we limit the number of options that are inside the dropdown. So in the first example, let's imagine we're logged in as the admin, and the admin has the ability to search based on all the states. Whereas a different user, when they log in, they see a limited number of options in the dropdown that they can search on. And by using the views, we have the ability to filter out how many states we want to show for different regions, and then we can include that view inside the dropdown. So let's take a look. Inside Caspi, I'm going to go down to Views, and I will simply edit my view to show you the configuration. This view is built on top of the orders table that we looked in the prior use case. So once again, we use the orders table. We click Next. Inside the Criteria tab, notice that I'm using a field called Region, and I want that to equal to the value of South. 
So I want this view to filter out all the data pertaining to that region called South. So when you click Finish and you open the view, you will now see 6,480 records from that table, and it's filtering all the data that pertains to that specific region. Now when I go back to data pages, I can include this view not only as the main data source to display the results, but I can also use that view inside the dropdown. So let's edit the data page. Click Next. You'll see how I'm using that view that we created. We'll hit Next. And let's navigate to the search interface. And for my state field, notice that I changed the form element to dropdown. I'm using both source and lookup table. Under custom values, I want to be able to search any, so it returns all the results. But under lookup table, you will see how I'm once again using that same view that's filtering all the states and all the data for that region called south. And down below, I have my state field selected, so it's only going to display the states in that particular region. Then you can configure all of your other fields if you wish. It's up to you. In this example, as you can see, we have a list box enabled with a comparison type called range. This allows us to search between certain values. So in my live example, if you look, if I want to be able to pull up all the data from 0 to 200 and I click search, it's going to return all those entries. If I go back, I can search just the states inside the south region. If you don't have the view created, then you can build your report based on the table. But if you do it based on the table, then you're going to be able to see all the states from that table. And it's not limiting to what states the user is going to be able to see. So that's the benefit of building the view, is to be able to filter data. And then you can apply that view as your data source for the entire data page. Or you can use that view inside the dropdown to limit the number of results that the user can see on the report. Now let's go ahead and move to our last use case where I show you how to combine tables together using common values. In this example, we have two different tables. We have a table of customers and we have a table of orders. I'm going to be joining these two tables inside the view using a common value between them. And the common value between these two tables is the customer ID. Let me show you. Let's open up the customer table and you will see how I'm using a customer ID as the primary key inside this table. And I'm using a data type called random ID to automatically generate a new unique ID for each customer. So if you look at the data sheet tab, you will see how each customer is uniquely identified using that random ID. Now, in order for me to link the orders to each customer, I have to stamp the customer ID inside the orders table. So let's go back out to the tables menu. Let's look at the design mode of the orders table. And you will notice how I have the customer ID field inside this table as well, because again, I want to be able to stamp the customer ID inside this table. If we look at the data sheet tab, you will see how I'm already linking a lot of these orders to each customer. It's still the customer's ID behind the scenes. The reason why you're seeing the name inside the table is because inside the relationship screen, so let's go back out to the tables menu, click on the relationships link. This screen here gives you more of a holistic view of all of your tables and how all of your data is linked together. Just like in a traditional database environment, if you come from an access background or have built some database applications, on this screen you can move all of your tables around and you can link them using primary and foreign keys. As you can see, I've already linked my two tables together using the customer ID. If we right click and edit this relationship, you will be able to see that for display value, I'm using the name from the parent table, and what that's going to do is replace the ID in the child table, which is the orders table, and it's going to replace the ID with the actual name. If you want the name to be displayed on the report as well on the data page, let me just move this down a little bit so that you can see. If you check this box here, now what's going to happen is if you build the report on top of the orders table, the customer ID is going to be replaced with the name of the customer. Assuming, of course, you check this box right over here. Once you're done setting up these settings, you can go ahead and save your changes. And again, using this window here, you can see more of a holistic view. You can see your schema of how all of your relationships are set up. And then keep in mind that in Caspio, you can have one-to-many relationships. You can have many-to-many, one-to-one. Again, just like a traditional database environment, here you can set up all of your tables. Now the main reason why you may want to build a view to join these two tables together is if you build a report using just this table, you're not going to be able to gain access to the other fields from the parent table. 
by using the view, if you combine these two tables together, now you're going to be able to see the fields from both tables, and you can use all of those fields in the reports. So let me show you. Let's go over here to Views. Let's click on New View. Let's give it a name. We're going to be joining our customers to orders. So let's just call it customers and orders. And the two tables that we want to move to the right, again, is the customer table and also the orders table. Once I click Next, you will see that Caspiel already defined this relationship for me. The reason why he did that on my behalf is because in the relationship screen, the one that we were just on, if you draw that line between your two tables, then you don't have to configure this view manually yourself. Caspio does that for you automatically. However, if you don't go to the relationship screen and if you don't define that relationship between your two tables, then it's going to look something like this and you'll have to manually configure the view yourself. And it's not overly difficult. All you have to do is just grab your customer ID from the parent table of customers. But because we also have the customer ID inside the orders table, inside the second dropdown, you can find that customer ID inside the orders table. Click on the plus sign, and you will see how Caspio creates the inner join. On the following screen, you'll be able to see all of the fields from both tables. When done, you can click on Finish, and now you have a view that's actually joining both of those tables, and you have access to all the fields from both the Customer table and the Orders table. Finally, if you want to build a report, you can go to Data Pages, click on New Data Page, choose the report layout. In this case, let's go with Tabular, click Next, and under Data Source, you can now build your report not just on the customer table or the orders table, but you can now build your report based on the view that's a combination of both of these two tables. If you select that view and you give it a name, style, and localization and you click Next, let's say you wanted to build a search interface, click Next. Now you can see how you have the ability to pick and choose fields from both tables. This is a very powerful feature in Caspio. You can combine multiple tables together. It doesn't have to be two tables. You can have three, four, five tables together if you want to pull information from multiple tables and display that information on your reports. This concludes the video on views. We learned how to filter data using the views, and we also learned how to combine tables together and some of the reasons why it's beneficial to filter data using the views and merge tables together using common values. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. And again, if you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please use the comment section below. For additional videos and articles, don't forget to visit our knowledge base at howto.caspio.com. Thanks for watching and good luck building your applications.